Greetings, I'm John the Spirit. We've got a great big um project today, and welcome to New Omnifactory Super Shorts. We're going to be passively automating Signalum and Lumium. So I guess it's an um project. Before we do that, I want to set up extra tungsten processing, because we're going to need a lot of it for the eventually, kind of soon, when we make nuclear craft fission reactors. You can get small piles of tungstate dust from N-stone dust at a 100% rate in an EV centrifuge. You may recall that I supplied everything I need for the end stone over here. To run this recipe, I'm going to need an extra 0.1715 ender pearls a second, which I think should be fine. But if we end up getting a net loss on pristine enderman matter, we'll change things up. I'm putting a crafting card in this interface so I can supply the end stone dust. As you may recall, I have end stone dust in this macerator. I might need some more crafting units at this point, though. Luckily, this is crafting all of them in one crafting process. We'll filter end stone dust into the centrifuge. Sand will trash. I don't want to use an EV packager for tungstate dust, so I'm just going to slap a mechanical crafter up here. As soon as we press plus in the recipe, it should start making the tungstate dust. I want the platinum dust to get auto-compressed. So what I'm actually going to do is storage bus it into this steel chest, and then immediately realize I could do the same thing with the small piles of tungstate dust. I've set up an extract filter for tungstate and platinum on this side, and another here for sand into this trash can. We'll partition tungstate into the storage bus. I also have two molecular disintegrators, which will make this recipe run every 22.8 seconds, which means we need a small pile produced every 0.8 seconds. This will produce a small pile roughly every 0.72 seconds, so this will almost run two electrolyzers, and that means my small piles of tungstate will not overflow my system with tungstate. Two iron filters for tungstate, two fluid filters for hydrogen, and our molecular disintegrator E's are running. With tungsten being produced roughly every 11.4 seconds, one EV blast furnace should be enough. We'll set that up later. For now, it's on to Lumium and Signalum. The advice I've gotten is that I should crafting card the blends, but I'll still use the level emitters to extract them into the blast furnaces like I do for my multi-smelter system over here. First, let's set up mana dust because we're going to need thermal elemental models for these three types of dusts. My calculations indicate that I need so few thermal elemental pristine matters per second that I should be able to just run one thermal elemental model. One thermal elemental data model. And off we go. We'll let that run for a while in hopes to train it up to self-aware, and now focus on the blends. Some of the items required for these blends require mixers. If I want to use one mixer as opposed to a bunch of dedicated mixers for all these items, and if I want to use AE2 interfaces to autocraft into these mixers, I'm going to need to use blocking mode with interfaces. Blocking mode will not allow the interface to insert anything into an inventory if there's already stuff in the inventory, so that way two recipes won't accidentally mix with each other. However, blocking mode doesn't work with Gregtech machines, unless you use a special fix for Applied Energistics 2, which was created specifically for Omnifactory, but is not on CurseForge. I will be installing that shortly, and I will put a link to the release section of GitHub that includes that file so that you can get it in the description. It also adds efficiency increases for crafting calculations. Before I do that, however, I do want to automate red coal real quick because it's pretty slow. I'll put coal into this ME interface and set this to extract always active coal, which will go into the resonator, and then I'll set this to extract always green. Eventually, I'll add like a level limiter or something. But for now, onwards to Pants AE2, made by Prototype Trousers. One useful addition of the mod is the ability to add items to the processing pattern section of the pattern terminal. This would have been helpful when I was encoding all of these patterns. Incidentally, they're copper, silver, iron, annealed copper, red alloy, steel, gold, and tin. I believe this is all I need. We'll set up a recipe for tin alloy dust, an energetic blend, ardite, and black steel. And we'll turn on blocking mode. Do not push crafting items if inventory contains items. Behold, another crafting CPU. Sterling silver dust, red steel dust, bismuth bronze dust, for which we'll need zinc, which I'll teach you how to get in a little bit, and an interface for the three types of dusts. To get blaze powder, we're going to put blaze matter into this loot fabricator. I'll set up patterns in this HV macerator for blaze powder, for example. And now you ask, where shall we get zinc? Well, I have all these chemical reactors now. I've tripled my sulfuric acid production. And when you make tiny piles of indium dust using indium concentrate, which requires purified galena, purified sphalerite, and sulfuric acid, you get lead zinc solution, which centrifuges into zinc dust, among other not-so-useful things. Making the tiny piles of indium is an EV recipe, but making indium concentrate is not. But I happen to have my HV lines and EV lines right across from each other, so I'm going to do something horrific exciting. We'll supply purified sphalerite and purified galena ore to this interface. Supply purified galena ore and purified sphalerite with a limited item filter to this advanced chemical reactor too. And also sulfuric acid is being supplied to create indium concentrate. 
We'll supply aluminium dust to this advanced chemical reactor and have an extract always active from this ME interface. We'll insert the indium concentrate on blue and extract always active so that it should start flooding into this chemical reactor and producing our tiny piles of indium. We'll extract on red so that the lead zinc solution goes into these turbo centrifuges. We'll trash the sulfur and the silver but the lead and the zinc will store. We'll give indium a storage bus home right here so that it should start going in. We've now got everything available in the system that we need to create our dye dust. We'll store it with this storage bus. We've also got to store all of these other extra dusts. Now we need to make the energize and destabilize clathrates. These do not take very long, and we get a lot of blends from each clathrate, which take a long time to run. So we're going to create both of these clathrates using the same chemical reactor and fluid extractor setup. I'm going to use MV for this, but I'm going to use N-steel cables even though I have energetic alloy cables here. N-steel cables can carry MV voltage, and you can even connect them to other MV cables without repercussions. As long as you don't accidentally feed like HV or EV, your MV cables should be fine. We'll set up a robot arm on this fluid extractor with an item filter and the supply exact mode. On glowstone dust, you can left click to reduce and right click to increase in this GUI. We'll do the same for two redstone. Slap a chest down here, route an interface down. Realize I can't open up the chest and be sad. Extract quartz only from this chest into the chemical reactor. Extract clathrates into the interface. This will be a recipe for energized clathrate. And the same for destabilize. To try it out, we're requesting four of each. It should work as soon as I set this to extract always active to get the quartz in and set this to import. And we should get the things in one at a time. And as long as I set this to auto export fluids, this should start creating the relevant items. Molten redstone didn't go in until glowstone had been completely extracted, so we won't get any messes. We now have everything we need for signal and blend, but we are missing the luminescence for lumium blend. I'm going to set a passive auto stocking of phosphoric acid, because phosphoric acid can produce phosphorus dust, which is going to be needed for indium gallium phosphide, and therefore we'll have everything we need except for auto making appetite. And of course we can have luminescence as well. We'll put our advanced chemical reactor on this ever-growing mess of MV wiring. There is one strange thing I can't figure out, which is that every now and then sulfuric acid fills this fluid interface, but it takes a very, very, very long time for the network to decide that the fluid, that the sulfuric acid should be pulled out of the fluid interface and into the major network. Look, it's doing it right now. I think it does it every time the sulfuric acid completely empties out of the fluid terminal. Clearly I'm making insufficient sulfuric acid to run this chemical reactor. And to think, I'm about to create yet another one for phosphoric acid. But it's fine, everything's fine, I can always just make more of these. Appetite is now entering this chemical reactor and turning into phosphoric acid and hydrochloric acid. Due to the infirmities of sulfuric acid insertion, I'm going to add another fluid interface specifically for insertion purposes. I'll extract all these fluids on purple into the relevant interfaces. Now there's no space for phosphoric acid, I'll just stick it in the rubber and the lubricant. Once there's 256 buckets of phosphoric acid in the system, turn on the, uh, I'm having trouble figuring out which channels are available for redstone, oh no. The yellow channel. Luminescence is not used for much. Unfortunately, it still requires a dedicated chemical reactor. But I don't think I'm going to pass it, I'm just going to craft it using the crafting card. We'll set up a pattern for luminescence. We'll pour phosphoric acid in this chemical reactor. And now we can craft luminescence, which means we have everything we need for lumium blend. I'll let you know if signal and blend works. After I added all the relevant partitions, it did. Now let's try lumium blend. It also did. Amazing. We have done it. We have autocrafted signalum and lumium blend. Meanwhile, our thermal elemental leader model, which was supposed to go self aware, did not because I forgot to extract out of the bottom. But in the meanwhile, I'll set up my six loop fabricators. These three on Blitz, Basals, and Blizz rods, and then Saltpeter, Obsidian Dust, and Snowballs. We'll put the rods into this drawer, and the various dusts into the drawers above. I've set up recipes for all the three powders, and the three theum dusts, and I'll slip diamond dust into this maze raider as well. If you're worried about this chest getting full, don't be worried about this chest getting full, because all of these items that are in it are going to be used for various recipes. In any case, mana dust is now craftable. As soon as we start getting increase in pristine matter. We're only a couple steps away from autocrafting signalum and lumium passively. Signalum will get us access to the signalum microminer, which will allow us to get several things, including diamond ore, which I'm going to use to get graphite so that I can make certain alloys for nuclear craft. Additionally, thanks to the indium and the phosphoric acid I made, we're very close to being able to get qubit CPU wafers, which will put us squarely in the late game tab, which is farther than I've ever gotten in this game, so I'm excited we're entering new territory. But we're also about to take a fairly large detour in the direction of nuclear craft for yet more power. Suffice it to say, I'm doing a lot of preparation right now, but I let's go back to single aluminum. Our data model is itself aware. We're on the way to filling up on these rods. We'll set up an interface with a crafting card. 
that's now working on all of our Lumium and Signalum blends. The chemical reactor is a temporary bottleneck, but once the Signalum and Lumium requests fill up in the interface, these will only run very rarely. Now we're working on 64 mana dust, let's hope it works. It looks like the bottleneck is really just waiting for this HV Mace Raider to do its thing. I am automatically extracting mana dust into this fluid extractor on the yellow channel with a filter on mana dust. It seems to generally be working fast enough. I'll turn off these level emitters at 4096 of both Signalum and Lumium, which basically means they'll probably never turn off. You need at least a thousand of at least one of them for the fusion reactor setups, I'm told, so I might as well keep a lot. Primal Mana is filling up these two fluid input hatches, and now these blast furnaces are running. Signalum and Lumium will get auto-extracted from these output buses into this interface, and I'm going to put them into this drawer over here. We did it! It's done! Hopefully this backlog will soon properly occur, and then we'll have a much slower creation of these items. Here's a quick note about my preparations for the fission reactor, by the way. I hope to be sending an image of the fission reactor in this description. But for what you need 633 blocks of graphite, 693 reactor cells, 698 fission reactor casings, 60 buffers, and 60 active fluid coolers, among other things. So I'm prepping for all that with over 2,000 tungsten, including the tungsten needed for tungsten steel plates, 592 steel heavy platings, which means that I've changed my level emitter over here for the steel heavy platings, 450 omnipennies worth of graphite ore, which I'm processing away. There were so many in here. Over 1,000 boron dust, which I'm actually getting from Lepidolite, because at EV, you have at least a 50% chance of getting boron from a centrifuge Lepidolite ore, and you get 10 Lepidolite ore crushed from every one Lepidolite ore, so it's very easy to get all the boron you need. I'm only 400 away. All the rest is just patient waiting. 640 blocks of graphite, arguably the easiest part of that enormous process. Nuclear reactors are going to be crazy. For now, however, that's it for today's episode. In the next episode, we'll work toward quantum circuits. We're really, really close. We're so close that we basically have everything we need except for the phosphor stuff, which we'll get very quickly by just electrolyzing phosphoric acid. We are so close. We will need a couple nanoprocessor mainframes, but none of that is actually too bad now that we've got all this stuff that we have. Autocrafting Signalum and Lumium is where I quit last time I was playing, so let's really hope that I don't stop now. I'm excited to get quantum circuits done. And nuclear craft will be super fun too. Except maybe making 33 IV centrifuges. If you'd like to leave a like, I think that'll help me with the algorithm. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.